Hello, this is Mr. Buffington, and today we are making transformations on a coordinate plane. Now, we're going to do things a little bit differently for most of the, the lesson today. Instead of me telling you or teaching the concepts, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show what happens with the transformation, and then you're going to have the opportunity to try and make a conclusion based on the things that you notice. So let's start off with the transformation of translation. Translation is when an object moves from one place to another. So let's take a look at what happens to this, um, to each of these points, A, B, C, D, when they become A, B, A prime, B prime, C prime, and D prime. In other words, when they're moved four spaces to the right. So let's look at um, point A. A is the point negative three, positive three and it becomes a prime which is positive 1 positive 3 notice the change there all right let's go to the point negative 3 positive 2 that's the point c and it becomes positive 1 positive 2 kind of went a little out of order there the point b negative 2 positive 3 becomes b prime which is positive 2 positive 3 and then the point c b is, or the point D, negative 2, negative 2, turns into positive 2, positive 2. So look at these points. That's what your job is, to look at these points and be a little detective and discover what you notice. What are the things that you notice about this? It's much more effective than me telling you a rule. Did you notice that the Y values all remain the same? When you're shifting a place, um, a, a figure from right to left, your y values stay the same. Your x values, however, all change, don't they? Every x value, we added 4 to it. So the way that we would write this is xy becomes x plus 4y. Again, the y values stay the same, so they stay. The x values we're adding 4. So you can take this and, and actually use it for any translation. Look at where the line, where a point moves, determine what changed, the x value or the y value, and then make a rule based on that. So with rotation, which is our next transformation, we're going to take the form A, B, C, D, and we're going to rotate it 90 degrees clockwise around the origin. So the origin is the point zero, zero. So when we make that turn, just imagine that rectangle kind of being pinned down on the point zero zero and flipping up to being here. Now we're going to look at each of the individual points and see what happened to them and see if we can find any patterns that will help us to make a rule. The point one negative one, that's the point D, it became negative one negative one. Our point one positive two, that's B, became 2, negative 1. The point negative 5, negative 1, or the point C, became, whoops, negative 1, positive 5. And the final point, negative 5, positive 2, which was the point A, became A prime, which is 2, positive 5. So when we look at those numbers, just looking at the numbers, can you make a rule? some kind of rule that we can make that says this is what happens when we rotate 90 degrees clockwise around the origin. So the rule, what I see here is that um, <clears throat> our, our x value here became our y value, only it was inverted. So the opposite of x is your, is your new y value. And your x value for this one was the same as your y value. So in other words, x, y became y and then the opposite of x. I don't know if you made that same um, observation as you were looking at it, but that's the observation that I made on this one. So we can make a rule that says if you rotate 90 degrees clock um, around the origin, that's what's going to happen. That'll be your result. Reflection. 
what happens to the points when they are reflected over the y-axis? Remember, the y-axis is the vertical axis up and down. When you reflect it, it becomes like this. A, B, C becomes A prime, B prime, C prime. And we are now going to look at what happened to our values. Negative 3, positive 4, that's our A value, became 3, 4. Negative 3, positive 1 became 3, positive 1. Negative 1, 1 became 1, 1. So what do you notice about those points? What's a good rule for when we reflect over the y-axis? Is it that your x value changes? It's the opposite of the x value. Your y value remains the same, but your x value becomes the opposite. What do you think will happen when we reflect it over the x-axis? Any guesses? That's what it'll look like. Here are our points. Do you notice any patterns? The x values all remain the same. Our y values become inverted. So in our previous one, when we rotated over the y axis, our x values get inverted. When we rotate it over the x axis, our y values are inverted. Let's do one more reflection. We're going to reflect it over the line x equals y. And that line looks like this. That's the dotted line that I've created here. And this is a really interesting um, reflection. It takes our figure from there to here. It's kind of a funny um, reflection. Sort of, I don't know, does some, some interesting things for us here. But when we flip it over this axis, notice what happens to the points. Negative 3, 4 becomes 4, negative 3 negative 3, 1, point B becomes 1, negative 3. And our point C, negative 1, positive 1, becomes positive 1, negative 1. Did you notice that when we flip it over the, the line x equals y, it changes our x and y values. It just swaps them. All right, again, an interesting rule that you can see when we put them together like this. So those are just some things to notice with reflection. Um, again, I can't show you every line of reflection you could have, but the principle here is that if you map out the points, look for what changes, and then try to make a rule based on those changes. That's what's going to work for translation, for rotation, and for reflection. It won't, however, work for dilation. Dilation's a little bit different, so um, I'm going to show you dilation here. So um, in this question, I'm just going to ask what happens. We're going to ask what is the scale factor and the center of dilation when you're given two shapes. So I have to give you two shapes that are similar figures, but they, um, they've been dilated. And they've been dilated around a point, and that's called your center of dilation. When you try to find that point, what you basically need to do is draw a line from A to A prime and draw it straight through that point. From B to B prime and continue it in both directions. From C to C prime and continue it in both directions. And what you're looking for is where do the lines cross? So I've driven a line from A to A prime, B to B prime, and C to C prime. I stopped them in the center because I knew that's where they were going to meet. But you can see that they cross at the point 0, 0. That means the center of dilation is the origin, the point 0, 0. And that's how you can find the center of dilation. It will not always be 0, 0. When it is 0, 0, there are some really neat things that happen. Um, and you can find rules like what we did in the previous ones. Um, and I would encourage you to actually do that. Go ahead and look at some of these points. The point A versus A prime, B versus B prime, and C versus C prime. And I think you'll find something very interesting, a pattern that happens between those points. Not giving away that answer, I want to find the scale factor. The scale factor, no matter where your point of origin is, is kind of like the number of steps away from the center of dilation. So if I look at B, the point B, that's the center of dilation. So my step is down 1 and moving to the left 2. 
down 1 over 2. How many steps is my new B prime? It's two steps, one step here and two steps. Notice C is the same. C goes down 1 over 1, down 1 over 1. I've gone down two steps now. For A, I go over here and up, over here and up two. Again, two steps now. So my new points, A prime, B prime, and C prime, are two steps away from the center of dilation. That means it's a scale factor of two. The original figure, A, B, C, is one step away. And then to make it to this scale, it's two steps away. If it was three steps away, the scale factor would be three, etc. So just to make sure that that's clear, the, the, the way that you calculate the first step is you look at how many points away your original figure, A, B, C, are from your center of dilation. And then you look at how many more steps you need to go to get to your, your new figure. All right. Common Core Anchor and PA eligible content is here. I hope that lesson was helpful for you. Have a wonderful day.